All right, guys, here's the deck I'm going to be playing this week. Uh, the shell was sent to me by Pike, and for the first time in a long time, what I did was I took the deck and I play tested it. I've been playing on my Xbox 360 recently, so I managed to get in 20 games with it, or 25 maybe in that range. So this isn't just uh, something that I've uh, come up with and decided to play. I've put some work into it. Um, thanks to Pike for the shell. He wanted to build a deck around Mana Force Mace, which is why I call it Mace Mastery, because there's a Mana Force Mace in the deck. It's five colors, so I'm just kind of riffing on Duels 2013's Mana Mastery deck, although this deck is really nothing like that. But, you know, it's got a Mana Force Mace. So what is what is Mana Force Mace? It's four mana equipment. The equip cost is three, so that's seven mana. That's a lot. It has domain, so it gets plus one, plus one for each basic land type among lands you control. So we're going to play at least one of each basic, and we're also going to play Cultivate to fetch them out. And hopefully we can get this thing buffed up to where it's a uh, it represents a plus five plus five bonus. We've only got one copy of it, so, I mean, you're thinking, why are you calling a deck Mace Mastery when it's only got one Mace? Well... I mean, we don't, we don't really want three maces, but we get to run three because we get to, to play two copies of Stoneforge Mystic to go and look it up. So this way we get to play three virtual copies of the mace without ever having multiple four drops in our hand. So uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of the thing. The rest of the shell is just some uh, some efficient creatures, some removal, that sort of thing. You know, I mean, with one copy of the mace, we were also playing a copy of Avarice Amulet here so that our second Stoneforge isn't dead. And since we're playing all five colors, we're going to play an obelisk. So we'll just start at the bottom of the curve here. And walk the way up. So, talked about Stoneforge Mystic. You know, she's a 1-2, so she blocks tokens. That's good. You know, she replaces herself. She draws you a card. And then you can cheat those expensive 4-mana equipments, the two that we're running into play for just 2 mana at instant speed if you got nothing else to do. So she's pretty good. Uh, play one copy of Reprisal. I mean, the deck, uh, the deck has some removal, but uh, this is one of my flex slots. Didn't really know what to do with it, so a little bit more removal is never bad. So I'm going to try one copy of that. Also at 2 mana we are playing technically Genesis Hydra, which is it's really not a 2 mana spell. Not even close, it's more like a 10 mana spell, but according to the deck editor it is 2, so I'll talk about it now. But it's just a way to cheat a uh, permanent into play for free and underneath counter magic. So I mean, uh, we're playing Cultivate, we're ramping. Again, this like reprisal, this is a flex slot, I uh, didn't really know what to do with it, so I'm just trying out a couple of singletons to see how they perform. You know, there's, there's three cards in this deck that I'm still still undecided on you know i mean the, the rest of the deck after testing is pretty solid but there's still there's still three slots that i'm kind of kind of tinkering with so we're also playing elvish visionary for our early game just to cycle through the deck a bit faster good blocker against the aggro decks can kill a foundry street denizen that sort of thing so uh that's why we're going to play her and is that it for two mana no we're playing three copies of ground assault we're playing red and green and we're playing ramp gonna have lots of lands this card for two mana is going to kill basically anything so, uh, I mean, if you're playing red and green and you need a bit of removal, Ground Assault should be uh, at the top of your list, so that's why uh, Ground Assault is in there. So let's go back and talk about the three mana cards. So, I mean, this deck was a Naya shell, but there were so many uh, so many Trilands that I decided to play some blue cards there. So we got, we got Brimass here. We're playing Naya. Uh, one of the other key themes of this deck is most of my efficient creatures on three mana have four toughness, because I am playing Anger of the Gods. I mean, you, you know, you kind of need it against the weenies and the tokens. But a lot of my creatures are going to come out the other side of Anger of the Gods, so that's really why Brimaz is in here, because he's got that uh, critical fourth toughness. Plus, he's awesome. I mean, he's a fucking sweet card, so I'm going to play him. Also on three mana, we just talked about Anger against the weenie strategies, the token hordes, all that sort of thing. You know, we're going to need access to this card to just uh, kind of blow them out and stabilize a little bit. So we're going to play Anger. And then, like I was saying about the blue mana, this was originally a Naya shell, but... Uh, I mean, I don't think there's any real harm in putting Rock's War Monk in here. I get to play seven blue sources for free in my mana base, plus I have an island. So there's eight sources of blue mana in this deck. Won't always get to cast this guy in turn three, but the deck has a lot of other stuff to do before then. So even if we get a War Monk into play on turn five or six, he's still pretty good. We can hang some equipment on him. He lives through anger. He shuts down the aggro decks. He's just he's just too fucking good not to not to play when you get to cheat in some blue mana sources on your Trilance, so... I'm going to play with Rock's War Monk. Since it was a Naya deck, we're, again, we're going to play the very extremely efficient Wooly Thoctar. Four toughness, and he's got our three primary colors. So this is our, our ideal turn three play, obviously. Maybe Cultivate, depending on the hand, but I mean, we really just want to get this guy get this guy down. So we're playing a lot of three drops that have, you know, I mean, War Monk, Thoctar, Brimaz, who's over there, and I'm not going back. So, I mean, there's a lot of efficient stuff in the three drop spot. The mana is difficult on all of them, but, you know, the, the Trilands make it possible, so... Let's get back and uh, talk about four mana. So this is a this is a card that uh, Pike had in his original shell, and I really liked it. 
because it's five toughness. It's really hard to kill. It's got a really annoying ability, and if you put a mace on this thing, it's just fucking crazy. It's a fairly safe place to hang the Avarice Amulet, you know, because if, if the creature dies, your opponent will get it. Talk about that in a little bit. So, I mean, it's a really safe place for that. Plus, we do have the Rock's War Monk to double our life gain. Um, and on the five drop slot, we got Battle Grace and Bane Slayer. You know, so there is a, a bit of life gain in here. Plus, we have the Obelisk of Alara. We can gain 10 per turn if this is on the field, you know. So uh, he's a really, really good blocker, and you know, it's, there is some nice uh, lifelink synergies here in the deck, so uh, that's why Faith Mender's in here. Also on 4 mana, we've got the equipment now, Avarice Amulet, so you get plus 2, plus 0 in Vigilance, which is really good. And you get to draw an extra card every turn, which is also really good, so I mean, this is a, definitely a good piece of equipment. The drawback, of course, is that when, you know, your opponent kills the creature that it's on, they get the amulet for themselves. But uh, most of our creatures are big enough that uh, anywhere you hang it, it's going to be fairly safe. You're not going to lose it to a shock. Unless, you know, you try to put it on a visionary, but I, I wouldn't do that unless you're totally desperate. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely worth playing. Uh, playing two copies of equipment in the deck because we have two mystics. So if you play your first mystic and draw a card, then your second one won't be dead. There is a chance that you'll naturally draw into your second equipment and your second uh, stone forge will be dead. But, you know, it's a small price to pay, but, you know, definitely two good pieces of equipment. So Mana Force Mace is obviously going to make something really, really, really big. And Rafik, this is my third flex slot with along with Genesis Hydra and Reprisal. I got this guy in here. He dies to the anger, or I'm sorry, he gets exiled by the anger. But I think that the Exalted and Double Strike to make our big dudes hit super hard. It's just, it's worth a try. We're playing the blue mana. We're playing Rock Swarm Monk anyway, so I think this guy, that he's been in my deck for, you know, for a very long time. Like I said, I've play tested 20 to 25 games. Never, I don't think I've cast him. I don't think I've drawn him. He's only a one-off. So uh, we'll see how he goes, but... Uh, on paper, you know, he's uh, he's definitely a good inclusion. But, you know, those are the three slots I'm really tinkering with. Rafik, Genesis Hydra, and Reprisal. Reprisal's been good. Genesis Hydra's been good. Rafik, I haven't uh, had a chance to really put to the test yet. So moving back along to five mana, we have the Bane Slayer Angel. I mean, this is uh, this is one of those cards, plain white. We're going to put it in there. You know, we've got the, the lifelink with the Faith Mender. Put an Avarice Amulet on it or, or a Mana Force Mace, and we're going to be gaining a lot of life. And in that same vein, we're playing Battle Grace, so I mean, she's 4-4, four, four, but if she swings by herself, she's a 5-5 five, five lifelink. Plus, she gives any of your other big creatures lifelink, so if you want to swing with uh, swing with your Woolly Thoctar, you know, he becomes a 6-5 lifelinker. You know, maybe if you got Rafik and your Battle Grace in some strange scenario, then he becomes a 7-6 a double-striking lifelinker, which is, you know, pretty insane. So Battle Grace is really good here. And like I said, Faith Mender, life gain, lots of... And we're going to be gaining life... Not slowly, but in just really big chunks, like five at a time, five at a time. When you put a mace on, that number goes up even higher. You know, so there's definitely uh, definitely a lot of life gain in here in, in big chunks. Also going to play Hunter's Prowess, because one thing that the mace doesn't do is grant trample. So we can have a nice big fucking dude and just cannot seem to get it to connect. So that one copy of Hunter's Prowess will uh, allow us to give it plus three, plus three, and trample. And, you know, draw basically a third of our deck, depending on, you know... How big the creature is, so we could uh, definitely not a third. Okay, now a sixth. We will definitely, definitely draw ten cards off of this thing in an ideal situation, or we'll draw zero because we made a dude so big that we just win the game on the spot. So, gonna play one hunter's prowess. That could maybe be two, but I don't know. This type of effect is, I think one is fine. Anything else on five? No, and we got three six mana cards. Playing the Felidar Sovereign here. Um, it's four six vigilant life link for six mana. To me, that's pretty good on its own since we're. Planning on playing equipment, you know, you can put an Avarice Amulet here fairly safely or a Mana Force Mace and just gain a fuck ton of life. And in my experience with this deck, I've never gotten the alternate win condition to go off, because again, like, like Rafik, he's, uh, he's a mythic. I have gotten him into play, though, and he's pretty awesome. Um, just as a place to put equipment, a big Vigilant dude, I mean, with a Mace on it, a fully powered up Mace, it's a 9-11 Vigilant lifelink, it's just insane. And then, you know, you get to... I, I've been well above 40 life multiple times with this deck. You know, you gain life in big chunks. So if you ever manage to draw and hit a Felidar Sovereign, you probably could win the game. Also, we're going to play Inferno Titan. I mean, we're playing Cultivate, we're playing Red. He's a little bit of extra removal, and he's a fucking bomb. I mean, what are you going to say about Inferno Titan? It's kind of it's kind of like Bane Slayer. You just... If you're playing a deck that can support it, you put it in there. You know, that's, that's the, the nature of our small pool. So uh, that's... Uh, so what we're doing, and I'm also playing one obelisk since we're playing all five colors in the deck. You know, so we've got access to all five modes. The one I find myself using the most is the green mode, as just like a mace on demand for a turn. I don't really use the red mode all that often. You can use the blue mode to filter lands. The black mode, I really, 
I've only got one source of black mana in the deck. Since I decided to play War Monk, I didn't play any Trilands with Black Island. So the only way to uh, access the black mode is to get your Singleton Swamp into play. And of course we've got the Life Gain mode, which depending uh, on the situation could be fairly useful. And yeah, that's the deck. Just uh, lots of multicolored, efficient 3-drop dudes, you know. Some, uh, some ramp, so a little bit of card draw, touch of removal, and some big 5 and 6 mana bombs that you don't normally see, plus the... Uh, the random faith menders, you know, Stoneforge Mystic is a card you don't see all that often, so I'm really excited to play this deck this week. Looking at the mana base, it's a Naya deck, so I ran four of each basic, plus one and one on the island and swamp, just for fetching purposes to get the, uh, excuse me, to get the mana force maze powered up. Again, Naya deck, so we're going to play all the jungle shrines. These are Selesnya Gilgates that uh, have blue for the Rock War Monks. And then I play two and two on Bivouac, which is uh, that's a Gruel Guild Gate with blue on it, and this is a Boros Guild Gate. So that's all my Naya Guild Gates. But again, we just stick the blue mana on there, and all of a sudden we got seven free sources, and eight if uh, you know you count the island, which obviously you should because it is a blue source. And yeah, I think uh, with eight blue sources we can definitely get away with four blue cards. I think yeah, four blue cards, the three uh, the three War Monks, and Rafik. So I think that's definitely doable on eight sources. You know. So, you know, we don't have really to, to shift our mana base in, in any way to get them there. The only thing that would change is maybe some of these blue mana symbols will be black and we'd get to play the black mode on Obelisk or something. But I think it's pretty good. And uh, we'll see how it turns out. And uh, like I said earlier in the Selesnya game, if you watch it, I'm not going to have time to get a gameplay up for this today. But you will see a gameplay coming for this. Hopefully, hopefully tomorrow early, but if not, by the end of day tomorrow. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you for that gameplay tomorrow.